Uh, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Kurinji, psychiatrist at uh, Mute Hospitals. We started this uh, webinar series uh, when the lockdown uh, was announced. Uh, thankfully, uh, the second wave seems to be uh, not dying down and uh, we are slowly opening up. Uh, uh, this week, we are talking about uh, mainly children and how COVID has impacted uh, the development. Uh, so I'll go with the present, go to the presentation straight. Okay. Uh, so uh, today what I'll do is like, initially I'll talk uh, for a few minutes about uh, just general childhood parenting uh, issues that we normally would have faced even before COVID. And then uh, people have asked me to specifically talk about gadget addiction uh, because it seems to be the main problem uh, that everyone is facing now. And then last third bit is about you know how COVID has changed uh, our lifestyle and how it is impacting children. And then we'll, uh, I'll do this for about 30 minutes or so, and then I'll take some questions at the end. So, you know, uh, people always ask about, you know, like parenting, you know, what's the right way, you know, because everybody is anxious. Uh, the reason I go a little bit into the history of uh, all these parenting sessions, because uh, in the 20th century or till middle of 20th century, most people were having many children. And, uh, you know, that's partly because in agrarian societies, you need more children to work the farm. Uh, and there was also no contraception. So when people had many children, it was parenting was never a question, you know, like you would, very, you would very rarely find, you know, books or anything on it. Over the last 30, 40 years, you know, most people are having just one or two child. So there is a lot more pressure uh, that we have put on ourselves to get uh, this child to perform at its best and be happy, all those things. So now, if you ask people, you know, this parenting is the hardest job that anyone is facing. I mean, uh, even, even we can go through history, uh, you know, people who have been, uh, you know, uh, excellent man managers, great leaders. Uh, if you look at their parenting, they have struggled with it too and their children haven't uh, done as well. Uh, so the point I'm trying to make is, you know, there are no experts uh, because I've read books in, from experts and if you actually look at what happened to their children, you will know that, you know, they have struggled too. And uh, when I was training, uh, my Italian professor told me, Kurinji, just because you have trained in psychiatry and you might have been a child psychiatrist for 10 years, doesn't mean that you can escape it. You know, we all have to face through the difficulties. Uh, so that doesn't mean, you know, we give up. <laughs> so, you know, we should try. That's why this session, this session is about, you know, what are the little things that we can do to make it better? Uh, so that's the next question I asked is, you know, how much uh, you know, of it is nature and how much of it is nurture? This debate has been going on. But now there is, you know, some consensus uh, that actually nature plays a far, far bigger role than nurture. Basically, your genetic environment and uh, what happens, uh, you know, it even shapes, uh, you know, how you think, how you choose your friends, uh, you know, what type of temperament. Uh, you inherit all those things are uh, nature bound. So when it's decided by nature, there's not much you can do about it. But at the same time, nurture also has an impact on how the child develops and uh, you know, what happens to it. Uh, we can see, you know, uh, just within our family environment or friends' family environment, how nurture has sometimes affected children. So in that sense, uh, you know, I you know, I put the doctor's Hippocratic oath you know, of a do no harm. It, I, I, I sincerely do believe that it applies to parenting too. So whether we make it better or not, at least we should, uh, you know, not make it worse for the our children. So that's why I put the poem up uh, written by, you know, Philip Larkin. He's an Englishman. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, if you read it, it's very self-explanatory. <laughs> um, you know, because, I mean, as I said, you know, we carry our fears, our desires, our dreams, and we project it onto our children and, you know, sometimes make it more difficult for them than it needs to be. Uh, so sometimes, you know, parents uh, 
we if we just you know stay quiet and uh, be in the background and just help them when they need i think that may be enough so these are the you now the other question that i get asked a lot is about temper tantrums you know uh, at a young age what happens is so uh, all children are conditioned to get what they want you know that's how we survive as a species so up to the age of about you no know, 12 months or so normally when children uh, need something they cry either they are feeling hungry they are feeling cold uh, whether their nappy is so dirty or they are feeling bored they usually cry and then uh, one of the caregivers will go and attend the child so the child learns that you know if i cry somebody will come and uh, do what i need to be done about the age of about 12 months or so when they are starting to or even 9 months when they are starting to crawl when they are starting to walk they are putting themselves at danger so the first time in their life they hear the word no and they won't like it because you know they want to do something and there's an obstacle so they get frustrated and they cry and they or they become angry uh, just they want to do what they want to do so what happens between the age of 18 months or so Uh, and onwards over the next 2 3 years more or less determines whether temper tantrums continue or not point is every child will start having temper tantrums around that age and how we manage it is important uh, so what happens is normally so the child uh, wants something uh, one parent or both parents say no the child starts to cry and then the other one uh, is upset so they let the child have it and you know, sometimes parents say no grandparents say yes or one parent say no the other parent say yes so what the children learn is okay if i cry or if i throw it you know uh, a tantrum or if i get angry i'll get what i want and each child you will notice their personality you know some get angry some can be very cute and very persuasive you know they can come and uh, manipulate you in a very sweet way too so you know those kids we don't call it as problem because you know parents are happy <laughs> but actually that's a problem too but i'll talk about it later so how do we manage it is basically when you're going to say yes you no know, uh, that's never a problem but when you say no you need to stick to it if you say no and then change it to yes then the children learn that i can always make my parents turn the answer to yes and they'll keep at it all the time uh, so that's one of the reasons why they throw tantrums just to get their own way then the second thing is that you know sometimes parents are busy uh, you know we don't have time uh, and only when they are throwing some negative behavior we get involved with them so when they are good we kind of we are quiet because we are feeling you know it's a good time to rest but when they are bad we get involved so what they learn is actually negative attention you know negative behavior gets attention so they keep doing negative behavior to get your attention so that could be a reason to so you need to think about it and if that is the case you know uh, just be attentive to them even when they are good so they can learn that actually i can get my get the attention of my parents by being good uh, so in this aspect you need to monitor your own behavior and another point is you know we need to understand the emotion behind the tantrum because sometimes it might be a sense of jealousy there is sibling rivalry uh you know uh, sometimes it could be because of sadness or feel a bit uh, dejected or rejected by the parents behavior so in uh, my kind of simple thing is the child's behavior will only change when the parents themselves change the behavior sometimes parents come and tell me you know like i want i, I i'm doing everything right i just want the child to change uh, it never works you know so we as parents we also need to look at what we are doing and see whether we need to change the last point i want to make is about temper tantrums is we need to separate the behavior from the child uh, what i mean by that is when they are being naughty or when they are being you know, silly we just uh, rather than calling them a bad child or naughty child we just need to say you know, that they are a very good child but they are doing something uh, you know that's not right or we can just direct the focus specifically on the behavior rather than so that's very important because what happens is if we give constant negative feedback about the child as a person then they internalize it and it becomes harmful uh, so i'll stop here about temper tantrums uh,
I mean, again, as I said, it's a normal thing. Okay, so don't, uh, you know, you, you'll see even adults in your life are throwing tantrums. You, know, you can blame their parents for it because. You know. Then the other common thing in childhood is, uh, you know, when all sweet kids, even well-behaved kids, they hit teenage and then suddenly, you know, parents are struggling. And this is a struggle that everybody goes through. Nobody escapes. The fundamental reason is uh, the relationship, the nature of the relationship changes. Uh, because when the, if you read about transactional analysis, the rules are clear when between an adult and a child. So the adult says or demands things or tells the child what to do. And mostly the children do it because they know the adults are in charge. Similarly, the rules are very clear when the communication is between adult and an adult. So, uh, you know, uh, with equal adults, we can't demand things. We can only make requests. You know, if you tell another adult, uh, if you treat an adult like a child, you know, you won't get anything done. And we automatically change our behavior and it works. The problem comes when adults communicate with adolescents. The reason being, adult talk to adolescents as, as if they are children. So we tell them, but adolescents, they think themselves as adults and they don't want to be treated like children. So they automatically rebel. And if you understand this fundamental aspect, then you'll be able to change how you communicate with an adolescent or with a teenager. And then you'll see a change in the teenager's behavior. Uh, the problem is as parents, we are conditioned to keep them safe. So our worry is that you know, let, are they doing the right thing? Will they be safe? So ours is about safety. So because of safety, we put some rules and they see it as we are controlling them because their instinct is to be able to independent. So it's safety versus independence. That's the underlying dynamic. So if you can discuss with your teenager about your concerns rather than shouting at them or getting angry because they're not understanding you or not, they're not doing what you ask them to if you communicate your concern. This is your concern, it's about safety. Yes, you want them to be independent, you want them to take responsibility, but how can they be independent and be responsible while at the same time remaining safe? Now, if this is a conversation that can be had, uh, I, I'm not saying that will solve everything, but at least that will be a right first step and you'll see a change because suddenly the, your teenager starts to see that you're treating them as equal, but within you, you still, uh, you know, uh, carry the role of the parent, uh, but it doesn't seem like what you're trying to do is control them. You're going to kind of work cooperatively with, cooperatively with them and they are more likely to listen to you. And sometimes there will be disagreements and that's okay. The other point is about in, uh, teenagers is that, uh, you know, the body changes and there's a lot of hormonal change and uh, young boys and young girls suddenly, uh, uh, you know, they're a bit more moody or they're they a bit more volatile. Uh, they are a bit more clumsy and it's all biological changes. So we just have to kind of take it in our stride and, you know, help them come to terms with it. You know, some children may be very shy about it. Some may be, uh, you know, some might seek information from all the wrong places and get uh, wrong ideas. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's very important that they get uh, right information from the right sources. Uh, because these days, you know, I, I was, you know, uh, talking about adult versus, you know, teenagers. Teenagers get phones, you know, especially, you know, like sexual images and things like that. Uh, it's part and parcel of the hormonal stage. Uh, uh, but how to kind of get this information in a safe way, healthy way, rather than getting all the wrong type of information. Uh, you know, especially there's a lot of uh, sexual content, which gives the wrong idea about uh, what relationship is. I mean, I don't want to go into specific because, you know, I'm not sure who's listening, uh, but I hope you get the point. Uh, uh, so this is something uh, that, you know, almost every family, including my own, I think if you, <laughs> I have two kids. So, uh, uh, and forget children, even adults are now addicted to gadgets. Uh, the reason being, I'll, you know, these are all articles uh, you know, that uh, we are reading more uh, commonly now. Uh, so what's the reason? The reason is it's all to do with uh, dopamine in our 
because it's a reward chemical. So it makes us feel good. Uh, the video games are designed to release dopamine in bursts. Uh, so uh, constant release of dopamine makes them feel constantly you know, stimulated and engaged and that you get addicted to it. Uh, if you don't get the dopamine release, you start to feel bored and you kind of go back to it again. Uh, that's why when people try to stop somebody from playing games, you see children behave very aggressively, violently. It's like as if you are removing the drugs from a drug addict. They get really violent. So I'm not saying it's everything is bad. So because uh, studies have shown that video games, some, you know, some games do improve cognitive function, problem solving, uh, and can be helpful, but overindulgence lead to a lot of uh, behavior change, uh, anger outbursts, and uh, things like it. And uh, it's, it's a huge issue now. I think in China uh, and Southeast Asia, uh, this is a uh, bigger problem than uh, that we face in India. Uh, because every year you will see you know, a lot of young boys, mainly boys, uh, dying. Uh, because what happens is they wear a nappy. They don't even want to go to the toilet. Uh, so they wear a nappy. And they don't want to get up and go and eat. So they kind of attach themselves to IV lines, you know, tubes, everything, and then play for 24 hours, 48 hours nonstop. And their heart rhythm gets affected and they die. So it's a serious issue and it's also affecting family. So a lot of countries have now started, uh, you know, de-addiction centers, rehabilitation centers, just for game addiction and internet addiction. Uh, so, you know, what can we do about it? As I said, you know, understand it's a very hard thing because no other activity can release dopamine as much as uh, video games uh, or you know sometimes people watch you know YouTube, uh, look at Facebook and all sorts of things. And uh, it's uh, very difficult. So you have to first accept that aspect of it. But at the same time, we can't let them play all the time maximum of two hours, it depends on the age, you know, uh, now, apart from the online classes, you can make schedule just two hours per day uh, should be enough for them to play games uh, and do other things. Of course, they won't agree to it. They will be demanding. They'll throw tantrums. They'll get aggressive. They'll blackmail you. All sorts of things would happen. But this is in one area where you have to be firm. And you can say that, yes, they can have the gadgets. They can have the game but only as a reward for completing daily tasks. Uh, you know, depending on the age of the child, you could now because most people are working from home, you make them, you know, do household chores, you know, help them with your cooking, help them with your cleaning. Sorry, ask them to help you uh, with the cleaning, uh, cooking, you know, you name it, all the activities, rather than you do it yourself all the time. You engage, uh, even if they're about 10, 11, they can do a little bit. Uh, so they need to do the daily tasks and they have to do the homework, all those things. And only after completing it, they should be having the games and the gadgets. But they'll be very clever. You know, kids are very clever. They'll know how to kind of, uh, you know, get there. So if you say, you know, once you finish it, you will get the game. They'll tell you, no, no, first I'll play the game. If you give me the game, I'll do it. So don't fall for it. Uh, this may not work immediately. Uh, sometimes... Kids who are used to have it for more hours, the first few weeks will be very difficult when you implement this program. Uh, because uh, it's like, you know, if you already have something and if somebody takes it away from you, you won't give it up that quickly. So you will put up a fight. So that's natural. But once you stick to it, uh, and as we said, you know, once you say no, you need to stick to no. And if you stick with it over the weeks, that behavior will change. And they'll slowly, their brain will start get used to not having dopamine all the time, uh, they would complain. So in that time, you can ask them to, you know, you can give them a book, you know, ask them to play chess, do activities uh, that are more calming. Uh, and over time, their brain will get used to it. Now, we'll talk about, you know, how COVID has, you know, uh, made things different and certain issues that we're only seeing because of uh, lockdown, COVID and working from home. One is a lot of anxiety in children, you know, because they are worried, uh, you know, who gets uh, COVID, what happens if something happens to parents. Uh, there's a lot of fear. 
uh, even young children as young as 6 5 in the clinic uh, you know have seen images of uh, you know a lot of death uh, people struggling for hospital oxygen and they worry uh, you know about uh, these things and sometimes they restrict their even their parents from going out uh, telling uh, you know if you go you are going to get covid this so the anxiety <coughs> Exactly. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, it's very real. So uh, that's a uh, that's a new problem. The second issue is you know, home confinement. Usually, children, you know, they like to play outside. Uh, you know, uh, play with friends. They want to socialize. Even if they fight, it's good to fight with you know other young kids. Uh, you know, they learn from it. Uh, but now. home confinement is the norm so there all their natural ways of releasing stress releasing you know pressure is not available anymore uh, and it has led to more frustration angry behavior parents are also frustrated because they are going through their own issues so uh, you know uh, we are seeing lot more common anger outbursts and aggressive behavior third point is about online class and related stress many people even in india have done studies on it and as you can see there is a lot of evidence uh, you know children you know like uh, they are sleeping in the daytime because they are not sleeping at night uh, report decreased activities you know uh, complaining of uh, pain in the eyes headache they have gained weight you know change in bowel habits uh, you know stubbornness tantrums uh, and their attention also has gone down so you can see a lot of problems uh, because you know even in the classroom the teachers can uh, you know hold the class together and they can monitor each child's behavior and uh, keep the child's focus on what's going on in the class whereas with online a teacher is not in control to that extent uh, so sometimes if parents have to sit next to the child and help the child if parents are working then they won't be able to sit with the child and help it so those children they naturally will struggle so we have to accept uh, you know some reality to it uh in you know because the staring at the blue screen uh, it does strain your eyes so what uh, you know ophthalmologists uh, you know eye specialists suggest is that every 20 minutes or even earlier people should uh, you know uh, look away from the screen and look something far away because your muscles that control your lenses you know they need to be kept active uh, when we are looking at a close object for long hours it uh, it gets you know weak and it's tiring so constantly changing the focal length uh, of the lens uh, is helpful so uh, that will be one tip that you can ask your child to do regularly so every 20 minutes or so look at something that's far away so the focal length of the you know lens changes then again you know regarding the concentration and attention uh, you know you can uh, help them by you know slowly reintroducing books to read introduce games like chess you know all the board games that you used to play when you were young uh, and those things will slowly kind of help them again you know the con- problem is with dopamine you need to kind of train the brain to be relaxed and not be stimulated all the time uh, the last point is about you know uh, kids you know in most of the talks i mentioned you know we are a social species we need other humans around us if we don't have other humans we feel very lonely and it is very you know damaging emotionally um, and they young children they miss having their peers around having the banter having a laugh uh, even though they do it uh, through zoom and phone calls they don't get the whole you know the group uh, dynamic you know four five sitting together and having a laugh then at a slightly older children you know especially the ones who are doing 12th standard now you know it's a nightmare scenario because you know we don't know how they are going to be scored we don't know what the cut off all those things so there's huge anxiety in parents huge anxiety in children about you know what the future is going to hold and uh, i don't want to minimize it it is real uh, but we'll talk about you know what we can do uh, in the next minute or so then the last point about the problems is uh, parents because 
the point i want to make is you know you need to look after yourself because if you are struggling it's going to impact your children too uh so if both parents are working from home you know it's difficult to balance work and online class so that's a struggle then because children find it difficult then they kind of because they are sitting next to them they ask you for completing assignments and more and more help uh india i mean not just in india and all over it's still a male dominated society mothers do a lot of things and uh, you know uh, uh, i think my wife would agree uh, i think she blames me for the problem but anyway i'll keep my personal stuff out of it uh, uh, mothers end up doing more uh, so just be mindful uh and again you know some people feel guilty as parents because they are not uh, you know they are overworked with their household chores and they are not showing enough attention to the children so some parents feel guilty uh the, the other point is about you know strain in the relationship with children and parents and amongst parents you know a lot of reasons we are all shouting at each other more and uh, incidents of domestic violence and child abuse uh, cases have been reported uh, during the lockdown so what do we do about the last three problems that we talked about okay there are some suggestions i would like to give so the first is about you know online class related stress the main thing is about physical activity we need to get the children moving around you know jumping up and down you know running because uh, what kids need to move around if they are constantly stuck they are going to be more agitated so even if it's as small thing you know as i said you know you, you don't need gym you don't need fancy equipments Uh, you just kind of make them you know jump up and down or uh, you know do push ups do skipping uh, do jumping jacks something along the line and then the other bit is about you know you can help them socialize even if you are living in an apartment complex there will be other kids yes it's covid time social distancing they need to wear mask and maintain distance but at least let them go and play around because sometimes what happens is parent anxiety about covid uh, doesn't uh, you know allow you know you feel so anxious you don't let your children go out and especially with now people talking about third wave and all sorts of things so just be mindful that you know it is covid is a serious illness but at the same time we can take precautions and still allow children to go out and play so wear the mask maintain the distance and let them socialize because it's very important and that would reduce their stress level the second point about you now especially for 12th uh, children uh who are worried about their future future uh the first point is it is natural to worry about the future so this was a problem even before covid but what they need is reassurance that this is not the be all or end all of life you know it's just one stage in life and uh, just because you missed in 12 doesn't mean your life has ended uh so if everything works out great even if it doesn't work out your life will be okay so that's the confidence that parents should have and should communicate to the children if parents themselves can't contain the anxiety and transfer the anxiety to the child it's not good because now we are seeing more and more cases of depression self harm and even suicide after 12th results you know uh, there was a you know, very tragic case 2 3 years ago about and the need uh thing was happening i think everybody would know it was it became highly political uh so that's the main point i want to communicate about this thing you know the future is not determined just by this one year and just by this one exam you know uh there are successful people in all walks of life just one career choice doesn't determine it uh you know people have many many chances you know second chance third chance you read about uh, you know if you want to read you know throughout history you will find people have had failed many times and then succeeded take even in indian team like a captain like dhoni look at how many times he has failed so it's all about you know making sure that failure is part of life sometimes things may not go the way we want but that doesn't mean that's the end of life so that confidence should be one internalized parents and then communicate it to the children so if they see you being confident and if you give them the reassurance come what may things would work out then they'll be less anxious and then they'll be able to perform better uh about parental stress 
you know the point is you know like you need to delegate your tasks as i said involve your children in doing the tasks if there are not enough adults to carry out and share the burden uh, you know uh, what i would suggest is don't be a doormat don't let others walk over you and constantly demanding things from you so everybody needs to share and again there are no easy solutions the last point is you know, uh, if you are struggling as a parent you know just be kind to yourself and do what you can and uh, go back to the first point i made you know nature has a lot more influence on your child's development so sometimes stepping back and just providing support is enough uh the people you know usually ask you know, you know what are good books on uh, parenting you know i don't usually recommend great psychologist books on other thing because it can be boring and as i said you know uh, everything you read about parenting you should take it with a pinch of salt you know nothing is uh, sacrosanct or categorical but these two books i have read it myself and they are very good and easy read and could be good fun uh, so if people are interested you, know, you can have a look uh, i'll finish uh, my talk and i'll take questions uh, please okay uh i'll okay this so one first question here uh doctor last 18 months the children are not able to do any physical activities like outdoor play etc they are now submerging with mobile and tv we are worried about their healthy life in future what is your suggestion and advice in this uh i mean uh, thankfully the lockdown is you know whatever people are opening up more things so uh, i would suggest you know again reengage them in physical activity that's main thing you know physical activity whether you are a child adolescent or an adult is very very important uh, so reengage them in physical activities regarding mobile and tv as we talked about gadget addiction it is very addictive and uh, you know uh, you you have to limit it you know you have to be firm uh, you know don't allow them to you know just be stuck with it uh, sometimes what happens is parents themselves are busy so if you are very busy you don't have time you need to prioritize and you need to make time to spend some time with your children uh, so i think that would be my suggestion uh, it's opening up again you know do it safely you know, wear a mask and do it safely uh, my sister is currently in a pg course in paramedical science which requires field work but since classes have become online with the pandemic her practical knowledge is affected and her confidence is shattered uh, yes you know a lot of people are, you know you would have seen a lot of youtube jokes about uh, you know engineers attending online classes and when they go to field you know the mistakes that they make uh, it is real uh, but what i can suggest is that you know there will be time where you know slowly things are opening up uh, with vaccination uh you know hopefully uh, by the end of the year uh, you know most colleges and schools uh, would reopen uh, so when she goes back if she focuses on her practical training and spend some extra time on it you know she'll benefit and there are also a lot of youtube videos and this is one of my colleagues told me about procedures uh, and uh, how to train uh, on a, by observing others so you can uh, whatever procedure that you want to try you can check on youtube you'll get nice videos on it you can have a look and when it opens up you know practice 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 and then you will get your confidence back uh, one way of reassuring you is what you're going through is what everybody else is going through you know you're not just alone so you won't be the only one uh, who are uh, who's missing the practical knowledge uh, i have an 8 month old baby my wife and i are not able to take her out since the pandemic and we fear this would impact her as she grows and meets her relatives as this is the age for her to mingle with others we fear she would become paranoid while meeting new people in the future can you help me uh, i think you are like a 8 month old baby is usually okay this is uh, you know uh, what's called stranger anxiety because what you would find is like the first 6 months you know babies whoever goes and picks up the baby the baby would be quite happy but by 
seventh, eighth, ninth month, eighth month, they start to what's called stranger anxiety because they can differentiate who's the parent and who's a stranger. Uh, so that's an important milestone. Uh, you know, but children are highly resilient. You know, so what I'm trying to do is reassure you that just because she hasn't met people um, in her first eight months, you now doesn't mean uh, that she can't pick up the skill. Uh, no. Children are remarkably resilient. You know, you have seen children who have gone through, you know, immense trauma, who have been in war zones. Um, they learn quickly. Uh, so, you know, you can uh, relax. She will be fine, honestly. Next question. Uh, okay, I'll read this one for you. Uh, I have a five-year-old son and an eight-year-old daughter. Uh, so long, I don't encourage them to use mobile fo phones and laptops, but for the past two years, I am forced to use them for online classes. My younger one finds it so difficult to sit for the class, and the class is only for half an hour. Uh, I mean, this is uh, similar. To, it's like two very young children. Uh, it's good that you don't encourage them to use mobile phones and laptops. So you are one of the very rare parents who don't use it as a easy way to keep them occupied. You know, sometimes when we are tired, we tend to you know give them the gadgets uh, for us to have a break. So you seem to be very good. You haven't encouraged. Yes, it's okay for them to have the online classes. Uh, you know, as long as they have regular breaks in between, it should be fine. Uh, about your younger one finding it difficult to sit still. Yes, it's very normal. There's nothing uh, wrong about it. You know, a five-year-old is not expected to sit still for that long, and especially sit still and stare in the screen. So, you know, uh, once everything starts, it'll be fine. Don't, you know, I wouldn't ask you to do anything to force him to sit. You know, let him move around a bit. It's all right. Uh, next question. My daughter, who's 15 years old, has always been outgoing and exploring new things. But this pandemic has seen her confined in one room and she has lost interest in the things that once used to make her happy. What do I do to help her? Okay. Uh, see, at age 15, it could be a natural transition into adolescence. Uh, so where she might feel, uh, you know, that she needs her own space and uh, doing her own things. Uh, but on the other hand, it could be a sign of her feeling a bit isolated from her friends and starting to feel depressed. <clears throat> yes, excuse me, sorry, especially if she's losing interest in the things. So uh, I would suggest, you know, go and see a pediatrician first, uh, you know, let them explore. If there are signs of depression, then that can be, you know, managed through therapy, you know. Yeah. But again, you know, uh, just uh, you know, understand it first. The context is very important when it comes to children. You know, any behavior can be a problem behavior. At the same time, any behavior could be a normal behavior. It's all um, depends on the context. So just uh, discuss with the child, please. Uh, I am a mother of two. My second da daughter is in her sixth grade and the lockdown on online classes have completely changed her behavior. She's stuck with her mobile and online games. She hardly sleeps. I feel she is lost in a different world. How do I handle it? I mean, this is again, you know, every parent's uh, facing this scenario. She's stuck with mobile because mobiles are addictive. They are designed to be addictive. All the websites are designed to be addictive. She gets the dopamine hits from it and nobody, nothing else seems to replace it. So we need to, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you need to stick to your boundaries. You need to make sure it's limited and she engages in other activities. Uh, she hardly sleeps because, again, the light from the phone, the wavelength is similar to the sunlight. So the brain thinks it's not daytime, sorry, it's not nighttime. So melatonin isn't secreted, so she would struggle with sleep. Uh, so taking the gadgets away by 8, 9 o'clock is a must. And allow at least one or two hours uh, of uh, rest from gadgets before the brain, and, and make the room dark, very dark. Then the melatonin would secrete and she'll start to sleep. And sleep is a habit. Once bad habit uh, kicks in, then it's very, it'll be very difficult to change. So make sure that you put good sleep hygiene. 
what is oh no thank you doctor okay, kindly suggest how to handle third wave precautions for children apart from sms social distancing mask and sanitize okay i mean third wave it all depends on our behavior if most society, most people in our society you know wear mask maintain the distance then uh, the infection rates would uh, can be maintained at a low level and we can uh, manage it as a society if and if people have vaccine if third wave does come i think when you mention your know, precautions for children apart from social distancing mask there is no other precaution you know because the idea is you know, covid virus only spreads because somebody with covid when they talk their droplets is inhaled by you or it's swallowed by you so either it goes through your mouth or nose very rarely through your uh, conjunctiva and the eye so as long as you cover your mouth and nose and maintain a distance that droplet won't reach your child so then they won't get uh, or the chance of them getting is very very low so please stick with mask and social distancing that's the only way because we are not going to get vaccine for children anytime soon uh, my daughter 11 years after this pandemic online classes she does not like social interactions what to do okay if she has never liked social interactions from a very young age then that's a different scenario if it has been a problem from a very young age then go and see a pediatrician if it's only a recent thing uh, where she doesn't like social interaction then you have to think about how would she spending her time if she's just spending her time with uh, phones and gadgets then you know children like it because it gives them uh, a lot of rewards if that's the case you limit your gadgets and then she'll start to interact uh, because 11 year old very few children get actually depressed as such and isolate themselves so uh, if you're in doubt you know uh, check a pediatrician but most likely it will be nothing once pandemic is over or once social interaction start again she she will start to interact Uh, hi doctor i believe children need little exposure of the outdoors now that covid is diluting so that their bodies can build some immunity is it okay to send them for some structured sports classes uh, yes you know just go and see how the class is conducted whether the adults who conduct the classes have been vaccinated uh, and you know the other children whether the premise is clean and you know cricket is a very safe thing because you know nobody gets closer uh, as long as they play a sport that doesn't involve close contact it should be fine Uh, but again you know precaution is important uh, i am a mother of two boys 11 year old and 9 year old for the past one and a half years out of fear we don't allow them to step out at all as such they are deprived of play time fresh air friends school all these add fuel to the tantrums in addition the screen time online classes assign all these are unavoidable i don't know whether other people can read the question but uh, i'm just going through it fast because it's a big question the moment they need a break they want tv tablet games worried about their overall health doctor any help on their nutrition part please also we have mixed views on the third wave and its impact on kids okay i mean uh, two boys 11 and 9 year old yes you are right to be anxious but at the same time you know as i said earlier you know we need to take certain steps and allow them to interact uh, uh, you know tantrums as i mentioned earlier it's uh, if you allow them to play outdoor they'll be able to release some of the stress and when they come they'll be a little bit more tired uh, and they'll be able to sleep screen time again limited stick to it uh, and don't allow them uh, you know just use it for prolonged periods then it's harmful it's okay when they need a break they want a tv if it's just for you know like a half an hour it's okay you can allow them to watch tv or play games for a little bit of time um if you're worried about their overall health don't worry as i said you no know, keep repeating you know children are very resilient they can go through health they'll come out okay uh, so just be supportive for them they'll be fine about third wave i mean there is some misconception that third wave is going to affect children predom- predominantly because uh, people thought that the first and second wave mostly impacted the adults and third wave uh, is going to impact the children that's actually incorrect uh i think aims did a study a few weeks ago and they showed even children have been affected uh, equally to adults and the almost 65% children in delhi have been exposed to covid so 
Uh, yes, there may be third wave, but it will only be equally, uh, equally affecting the adults and children. So far, luckily, uh, you know, it, COVID is not uh, very serious in children. Most children are asymptomatic. In adult population, about 85% are asymptomatic in children, even uh, larger population are asymptomatic. So it won't have, I mean, to answer your question, it won't have more impact on children than the last two wave. It will just be the same. Uh, I am a final year engineering student. Almost two years we have been learning only online. No practical classes, no practical college. Already an engineer getting a job is difficult. On top of it with such difficulty, I'm really panicking. I've lost sleep under times, even my appetite. What should I do? Yes, you know, as we talked about that paramedical student uh, worried about practical classes. Uh, you, know, you can learn, you know, don't worry. There will be a time where you'll get a chance to learn. Uh, regarding the job opportunities, uh, you know, again, stay, be patient. You know, when we are young, I remember even when I was young, you know, one year feels like a very important time. You know, if you don't do it in this six months, if you don't do it in this one year, as if life is going to come to an end. But it's not the case. You talk to any adults, you know, like you talk to people in their 50s, 60s, or even in 40s, they'll tell you, you know, like we take, for example, okay, I'll give you my own example in our batchmates. When we finished MBBS, some of uh, them got PG immediately. Some of them went to work and, uh, you know, some of them went overseas. All people's lives seemed very different. Then 20 years down the line, if we meet now, you know, all our lives are more or less the same because the ones who started slowly, they catched up. The ones who seemed to go ahead, they kind of slow down. So it will all work out. Uh, you need, you know, uh, uh, please feel reassured. It will work out. Don't worry. About sleep and even your appetite, that's the worrying bit. Because sometimes what happens is if we become too anxious or if our mood becomes low and we become depressed, we might lose appetite and sleep. So, uh, you know, uh, if it continues, uh, please go and see a doctor. Right. Okay. Uh, can I get tips for pre-adolescent kids since there is hormonal changes within them and energy level is high? mood swing is more and they are looking for peer group interaction as well how a parent can help them i mean uh, as i said you know there are uh, uh, that's natural development you know they need to engage with other children that's how they learn to socialize their mood swing is a bit more but we need to be the ones who contain it let them go high and low it's okay if we go high and low along with them then they don't learn how to manage it and we become tired and we become irritable so when their energy level is high, let them, uh, you know, go around, play, you know, get it out of the system. You know, if they are a bit cranky, just leave them alone. They'll you know, settle down on their own. They'll learn to self-soothe, self-manage. If they need help, if they come to you for uh, support, just reassure them and be a calming presence. Uh, you know, don't try to do too many things. You know, just be in the background and calm them. That will be enough. Uh, Hello, doctor. My daughter is in ninth grade. Daily, she has to attend six to seven classes online. In other time, she has to complete her assignments with the gadgets. I thought she became more addicted to the gadgets. Please suggest some ways to take out gadgets for her to relax her, from her to relax her. Uh, I mean, as long as she's only working on the gadgets, you know, that's uh, on doing her homework, uh, no, that's okay. Apart from that, you, know, you can maybe give her you know, like two hours limit. The point is, you know, if you want to kind of her to come off a gadget because she's in the ninth grade, she would have been 14 and she should probably be 14 year old. Uh, it's only parents, uh, you know, we have to spend some time with them. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can read a book together uh, and then discuss it. So she might, if she likes books or if she likes, uh, you know, any games like chess or playing a musical instrument, you can go and buy a new musical instrument and you can learn it together. Uh, you need to find what her interests are. You know, some children like gardening, some like painting. Uh, so all non-gadget like uh, activities that uh, there are many activities. You know, I, I mentioned quite a few, but you, you can go through it, find out and, uh, you know, do it with her. She'll like it. Uh, my son is three years old. And symptoms of ADHD. What are things to be done, sir? Uh, okay, <laughs> that's an interesting question. See, at three-year-old, if all children will look like they have ADHD, 
but we don't diagnose ADHD before the age of six, uh, at least in Europe. In America, they do diagnose it at a slightly younger age, uh, but at three, no, uh, don't worry. Just once your child starts attending primary school, you know, like kindergarten, uh, you talk to the teachers in the kindergarten and see whether your boy is more active than others. Okay, sometimes children can have excess activity, but if that activity, if it only impacts on his learning, if it impacts on his behavior, then you need to go and you know, check with the pediatrician whether it's, but at the age of three, I would suggest you to relax, you know, take it easy for the next three years. And once he starts to go to kindergarten, then you can uh, you know, uh, check with it. So three years old, you know, nobody can tell you, you know, whether your child has ADHD at this age. If they are saying it, then they don't know the subject. Uh, next question. My niece is three years old. She's admitted in a school and online classes have started, started for her. She has no idea of a classroom concept or who her teacher is. So she never sits down for classes. How can we help her? Okay. I mean, at three years old, online class, no, a three-year-old child would find it very, very, very difficult. You know, uh, I'll talk about, you know, like uh, Finland here. Because in Finland, education starts at the age of seven. And even at that age, they don't ask the children to sit in a classroom with a board. You know, they take the child to the garden, they let them play around, and there the teaching starts. You know, what is the soil? What is grass? The natural curiosity the child asks, you know, how is a tree? Why is a tree big? Why is the sky blue? You know, all these natural curiosity questions that children ask, and then the teachers engage with it. So uh, forget whether she sits in the online class, whether she listens to the teacher or not. It's okay, let her play. This is the age where we need to maintain curiosity and confidence. If we put a, if we make learning a painful process at such a young age, uh, you know, children think, you know, studying is uh, painful and they avoid it. So even their natural curiosity would get, get dampened. So you need to talk to your sister or your brother, you know, three-year-old online class, don't worry too much. Okay, she has plenty of time to learn and uh, catch up. Uh, next question. My children are going crazy being stuck at home for the last one year. As the stay is getting longer, it really concerns me about their behavioral changes. My friend advised me to get them a pet as it will keep them a little occupied. Will this work? It could work, but the other thing is they might start taking the frustration out on the pet too. So be careful. Uh, I don't know what age uh, the children are. Uh, so if they are of a responsible age, yes, you can get a pet. But, uh, you know, that's not uh, a magic bullet. That's not going to solve all the problems that you're facing. So, uh, you know, now it's opening up. So you, all can, you can allow them to go out a little bit, allow them to play with their friends a little bit uh, and engage in some physical activity. Uh, and also sometimes they get excited about the pet for one week and then they get bored. Then you have to end up looking after the pet. So think before you go and get it, please. Uh, sir, I am an 11th standard student and I am preparing for NEET. There are many online classes and works to complete. Uh, it's like a, you are like a poet, you know, like a rhyming, preparing for NEET and works to complete. So it's really difficult to handle everything. Uh, nowadays, I am becoming tired very often and couldn't make out why. Can you say, doctor, like how to overcome the science? Uh, see, when preparing for NEET, yes, we can put ourselves under huge stress. The only thing I would suggest to you is, you need to engage in uh, physical exercise on a daily basis, at least for 20 minutes. Because when you do that, endorphins secrete in your brain and that will give you energy and that will make you positive. Uh, and it will actually help you with your studies. Because constantly sitting and studying, your mind gets dazed and you don't learn anything new. So every day, do some physical activities and you will feel fresh and you'll be able to manage it. Uh, so physical activities is as important as learning. People, studies have shown that young boys and girls who engage in daily physical activities do better in studies. Uh, so you won't feel tired. That's my tip to overcome the tiredness. Uh, my son is playing video games excessively and I find it very difficult to convince him to switch it off. 
sadly he never concentrates on his studies and also complains of inability to fall asleep uh, you know again you no know, playing video games because it's designed to be addictive you know uh, all the the companies they are very clever they use psychologists they use programs that hooks anybody's brain uh, so you are fighting against a huge corporate world where you know they want your child's attention so uh, it's a difficult task but again the solution is the same you have to limit it there is no other way uh, the inability to fall asleep is because as i might have answered earlier because he is playing video games all the time his brain is constantly active and uh, it doesn't switch off so that's why he is not able to sleep because the brain doesn't get the rest to see the darkness for melatonin to secrete so you need to switch off the machines by 8 o'clock 8:30 or 9 and allow the brain to settle for some time and let him be in a dark room then melatonin will start to secrete then he'll fall asleep we are parenting two children thank you very much you know some parents have given compliments so thank you we are parenting two children in the age group between 8 to 10 my query here is how to keep up the zoological time table right for our children i mean like the biology i think i can see you are a very well read person you, you put us with all the animal world okay. they don't seem to do things the way they used to while they were physically attending schools for instance their bed timings are getting affected and they lack I mean, again, you know, physical activities. As I said, you know, you don't need a gym. You don't need a lot of outdoor spaces. Even in their room, you can make them. You know, like uh, uh, you can tell them. You know, if they do skipping, if they finish thousand skippings, they get extra fifteen minutes with their gadgets. Uh, so they that will motivate them more than anything. You know, if you use your gadgets as a reward, as I mentioned earlier, and if you tell them they'll only get the gadgets uh, if they are engaged in physical activity. Uh, either it's you know jumping up and down or doing push-ups or uh, you know uh, burpees jumping jacks all sorts of physical activities uh, you can tell them that if only they do it then uh, you, know, you can you know. regarding maintaining the circadian rhythm is about maintaining the schedule so it's okay you know if they're going to normally go in school days they used to go to sleep at 8 o'clock now they are only going to sleep at 10 o'clock that's okay as long as they sleep from 10 to 7 o'clock in the morning they get about 9 hours of sleep no uh, that's okay so between age 8 and 10 probably they would need 10 hours of sleep so uh, as long as you maintain a regular routine where they have 10 hours of sleep every night uh, that will maintain their uh, biological time table i mean what we call a circadian rhythm the hormone secreting at the right time uh, the next question Uh, sir online classes are making children more self centered introvert and lack of confidence how this could be eliminated from uh, i mean again i don't know what age your children are it's not necessarily that they are becoming self centered what it is is we are all self centered you know we all want to get what we want it's just that we are seeing it more often because we are spending a lot more time with our children uh, you know they have just as self centered as before covid and continue to be uh, becoming introvert yes that can be a concern uh, so you know see you know what i don't know what environment you live in uh, try to you know you can invite your family or friends who have had vaccines uh, relatives maintain the distance and slowly reengage with the world around you uh, again without knowing uh, the age of the child it's very difficult to say what lack of confidence and how to go about it but in general they will revert back to normal you know most children the vast vast majority once you know life turns to somewhat normal see they will get back to their normal routine very easily without we having to do anything special if there are still problems then you can get help but for most parents what i would say is you know you can relax children would be okay uh, okay so i think it's about time now uh, so i'll finish for today Uh, thank you very much for your time and if you have more questions like me not i'll try to answer it uh, later on okay all the best everyone enjoy and be safe